Finally, SpaceX's first attempt to catch the Super Heavy was successful with the pair of chopsticks, not only bringing a resounding victory for SpaceX, but also pouring cold water on the FAA and other environmental agencies that had previously delayed the launch due to concerns that catching the rocket might pose environmental risks. So, after this awesome achievement, what's the FAA going to do about later Starship flights? Will future experimental Starship launch permits become even more complex and delayed? How did Elon react? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And thanks for being with us. Truly embarrassing. That's probably how FAA admin Mike Whitaker feels about now. Earlier, he stayed silent and didn't reply to all the baseless accusations he directed at SpaceX. Although SpaceX got their launch license Saturday, it seems that the FAA's remorse is insignificant. They didn't seem too happy about Grant SpaceX an early launch license for Starship. That reaction is somewhat understandable as the FAA quickly fell behind SpaceX's rapid advancements. If the FAA's biggest concern was the sonic boom upon re-entry, or if that was just a cover for underestimating SpaceX's Mechazilla thinking it would explode and harm the environment, then those fears have now been proven to be far-fetched. SpaceX has done something no one else has done before. The sonic boom was confirmed to have no negative impact on the surrounding environment thanks to the functioning of the water deluge system. There were no rocks or debris flying around, and the catch was executed flawlessly without any wasted motion. The precise landing of Starship's second stage in the Indian Ocean left the FAA with nothing to criticize or to use as an excuse to make things difficult for SpaceX. Perhaps that's why, while everyone else, including NASA, was congratulating SpaceX, the FAA noticeably did not. Instead, they quickly issued a new statement. The FAA said all flight events for both Starship vehicle and Super Heavy booster occurred within the scope of planned and authorized activities. Thankfully, this means no investigation into Flight 5. While SpaceX has yet to publicly reveal plans for the next Starship flight, or when that's going to happen, the FAA did mention that they've approved a launch license for SpaceX to fly the next Starship with the same mission profile as Sunday's. This has made Dan Huot, a SpaceX communications manager, more excited than ever. Ship just gave us a heck of a show, making it through control to re-entry this time. Flaps intact, touched down to the water, he said. Starships are meant to fly. It sure as heck flew today, so let's get ready for the next one. This suggests that the sixth flight of Starship could happen soon, with similar effects to those of Flight 5. Last month, Flight 6's Ship 31 underwent a static fire test of six engines, signaling it's almost ready to go. SpaceX's engineer, Elon Musk, also made a bold statement. Flight 6 will be ready to fly before Flight 5 even gets approved by the FAA. While this remark was probably aimed at proving that SpaceX can build Starships faster than the FAA can give out launch licenses, it's safe to say SpaceX has gotten really good at this. Flight 6 will likely take off without any FAA issues. Of course, this does not rule out the possibility of SpaceX changing the launch config for Flight 6, although I think that the chance of that happening is pretty low, as SpaceX tends to follow an iterative development process, meaning they learn from Starship Flight 5 and then apply all that to the next mission. So there is the possibility that some aspects of the next mission may change a little bit. But even if SpaceX does change their launch plans, there shouldn't be a problem so serious that the FAA has to delay the flight, right? The main concerns raised by the FAA, such as the water deluge system, new heat shields, and the sonic boom upon the rocket's return during the Super Heavy catch, have all been addressed. Even if they were to attempt catching Starship with Mechazel on the next flight, I can't think of any valid reasons for the FAA to launch an investigation and hold up the flight. If the FAA continues to delay Starship launches without good cause in the future, we can be certain there are political motives involved. Things would get worse if Trump doesn't win the presidency in November. Elon and his companies will undoubtedly be the target for government agencies in retaliation. This explains why Elon consistently criticizes the political motives behind the FAA's oversight. America is being smothered by legions of regulators, often inept and politically driven, Musk wrote on X referring to the FAA. Let's wait and see what happens. Aside from the changes SpaceX might make for Flight 6 based on lessons from Flight 5, there are other tasks on the to-do list that don't involve catching Super Heavy at Starbase. One focus would soon turn into proving that Starship can restart Raptors in space, a crucial capability for leaving low Earth orbit and heading towards a guided re-entry. For these initial test flights, SpaceX deliberately brought Starship into a suborbital trajectory that naturally brought it back to the atmosphere, ensuring the ship wouldn't get stranded in space as an oversized piece of orbital debris. Unlocking orbital flight allows SpaceX to start launching Starlink internet satellites on Starship and start testing in-space refueling, something engineers need to perfect for Starship to accomplish SpaceX's goal of enabling human exploration to the Moon and Mars. 
Elon, founder and CEO of SpaceX, first proposed the recovery of Starship's first stage, the Super Heavy Booster, nearly four years ago. We're going to try and catch the Super Heavy Booster with a launch tower arm using the grid fins to take the load, Musk posted on Twitter in 2020, two years before buying the social media platform and changing its name to X. This approach would be different from how SpaceX lands the smaller Falcon 9 booster, their workhorse rocket. Falcon 9's got landing legs and usually lands on unmanned drones stationed hundreds of miles offshore or as a designated landing zone on land separate from the launch pad. SpaceX has landed Falcon 9 boosters more than 350 times, but the Super Heavy booster is 50% taller than the first stage of Falcon 9 and two and a half times bigger than its diameter. This puts Super Heavy in a different class. The first stage booster of Starship is bigger than a 747. Images of the Super Heavy booster captured by SpaceX in midair on Sunday closely resemble Elon's initial description. Ultimately, SpaceX engineers want to master the launch and landing of Starship and then quickly turn the rocket around for another flight. It takes SpaceX a few weeks to refurb a Falcon 9 booster for another flight. With Starship, SpaceX aims to shorten this turnaround time to just a few days or even a few hours. Elon recently revealed details about this, saying on X, Starship is designed to achieve reflight of its rocket booster ultimately within an hour after liftoff. The booster returns approximately five minutes, so the remaining time is reloading propellant and placing a ship atop the booster. In a 2020 post outlining the plan to catch the Super Heavy booster, Musk said this method saves mass and eliminates the cost of landing legs. He wrote that the plan also enables immediate positioning of the booster onto the launch mount, making it ready to refly in under an hour. In his speech at Starbase back in April, Musk said he hoped SpaceX will start landing the Starship spacecraft back in Texas next year. Like the boosters, the spacecraft will be caught by arms on the launch tower. Obviously, there's a lot of work before we get there, but we just caught a booster, Hewitt said toward the end of SpaceX's webcast on Sunday. We're going to start looking real soon at when we can catch a ship. So, what's next? In recent months, SpaceX has been constructing a new launch tower just west of the current Starship launch pad in South Texas. Crews are still working on the second launch pad, but it could be operational next year. SpaceX also wants to activate two Starship launch pads at Cape Canaveral in Florida. SpaceX has many boosters and spacecraft in various stages of assembly in South Texas. The company stated that a new massive production facility called Star Factory will make multiple spacecraft and boosters every week. Engineers are developing two larger versions of Starship and Super Heavy to meet the rocket's performance goal of delivering 100 tons of payload to orbit. The long-term plan includes several Starship variants, including ships equipped for human passengers, fuel tankers, depots, satellite deployment ships, and maybe even a space station from Starship. Sometime next year, SpaceX plans to launch a pair of Starship spacecraft into orbit using two parallel launch pads in Texas. The ships will dock with each other in orbit and test technologies for transferring cryogenic fuel, something that has never been done in space on this scale. This demonstration is a precursor to future Artemis mission campaigns, where Starship spacecraft must launch consecutively from multiple launch pads. There's no doubt that the human landing system is the critical path for Artemis 3, said Lori Gaze, acting Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's Exploration Systems Development Division, referring to the Artemis program's first lunar landing mission. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.